You know what bugs the hell out of me? People call in a horror movie elevated horror. Elevated horror. <laughs> Just because a horror movie happens to also be a good movie doesn't mean it's any less of a horror movie and needs a special name to differ it so. Sure, the Academy will never admit they gave an award to a horror movie, but we don't have to follow that outline. Award shows are kind of meaningless half the time anyway. More like a popularity contest. It's... Honestly, calling a horror movie elevated horror is like calling something high art. Art is art. And a horror movie is a horror movie. So knock it off. Night of the Horrified. You're all invited. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Our kids think they have it so freaking rough. Because <laughs> when they're grounded, they don't get to play their Fortnites or um, Minecraft or whatever the hell they play. Um, Fortnites. The Fortnite. <laughs> I'm old, okay? I'm very old. Oh, my God. No, but, like, I remember when I was younger, we didn't have, like... I had a Nintendo, so, like, you could ground me from that. But then that was it. And, and like, being grounded was you don't get to go outside. You don't get to go anywhere. So boring. I read a lot. I did, too. I feel like I read a lot of books. I uh, I did read a lot, too. I had a TV in my room, but I did have limited TV time. Ugh. Well, in my room I did. Yeah. But if I, I went to where my parents were watching TV, I was allowed to watch TV. <laughs> well, welcome to Night of the Horrified. <laughs> you just joined us. We're uh, bitching about kids. Oh. God damn. Okay, well, get off my fucking lawn. God damn it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> if you're just joining us, we're really not a podcast gr- grumpily talking about little kids. Um <laughs> That'd be weird. We're a podcast that takes a horror movie that my wife has never seen and uh, torture her with it. Um, Not this episode, though. This is our casual horror episode where we strip down, have some casual horror, and then smoke a cigarette afterwards. (laughs) (laughs) So, have you watched anything new lately that I haven't seen? I was like, what? (laughs) Everything is new to me. Sure. That you haven't seen? Yeah, that I haven't seen. I haven't seen anything. Or seen any trailers. Have you seen any good trailers? Mm, I saw a snippet of the trailer for the Joaquin Phoenix um, Joker movie. Man, that looks really good. I've been hearing a lot of people like bitch about it because it's not following the comic book but i'm like i kind of but that's why okay so amanda told me that is why it's not part of the um amanda's your friend from work yeah yeah um and a podcast host (laughs) (laughs) for gather the nerds anyway um she said that's why it's not part of the dc eu Oh, the extended universe or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole separate <laughs> show like, to get into all that. But I'm like, uh, I don't know, but, but I'm I'm sick of superhero movies. <laughs> I feel like what? I'm alone in that venture, but I'm like, even and I love Batman, you know this, but like, even that, I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm good for a while. I need less Batman. You know what's been <laughs> really cool since we started this? I've been getting um, people have been sending me like really independent people have been sending me their um, movies that they're working on and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, And God, there is so much new talent out there that nobody knows about. It's really, really interesting. I mean, a lot of it's flawed. I mean, you know, obviously you're just starting out. Especially if it's low budget. Yeah. And they don't have the money to hone their talent, which money doesn't really matter that much in this genre. But, it does when it comes to 
equipment and stuff like that. But it's cool because like you're seeing some people who are probably going to go on to do big things and you're getting to see it first. That's why I know some of these other people that I see online that do movies and podcasts and stuff. They're getting these uh, big time screeners like It Chapter 2 and, you know, some screeners like that. But we're getting like these really independent ones from people that nobody really knows of too much about. And I like that better. It's so much fun because like what if. Like this guy I was watching today, I showed you a few clips of the movie he sent us. Yeah. Um, which I'm, I'm gonna have a little special little episode come out eventually with reviews of these things because they're so good they deserve like little mini episodes. So look for that on the feed. But like it's cool because like I said, you're you're watching somebody hone their skills and you're seeing things to where you're like, ooh. That looks cool. That's a good idea. That's cool. So, I don't know. It's much more satisfying. So, if any of you out there are making your own movie and you want us to take a look at it, send it in, man. We will watch it. Yeah, we'll watch it. It's great. I, I we'll love these things. We'll talk about it. I mean, even somebody sent me, um, which I mentioned in one of our episodes, but somebody sent me a little YouTube video they made that was just creepy and cool, and I liked it, and so I plugged it on the show. So, it's not... You know, you don't have to pay to get on the show. <laughs> Just send me something. If I'm really interested in it, I'll probably talk the shit out of it. But um, speaking about franchises and stuff like that, like we just talked about the DC franchises mm -hmm. and superheroes. Speaking about franchises, um, you know, there's a big controversy. We talked about it in our Friday the 13th episode, like kind of touched on it a little bit. There's a big controversy about the lawsuits and stuff about who owns the rights to Friday the 13th and it's going back and forth and it's honestly not looking good. I don't even – we may never see a Jason movie in our lifetime. <laughs> it's so tied up until one of these guys dies. That sounds morbid but it's kind of the truth. That's crazy. But one slice of good news was the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. The rights of that were looking kind of dangerous because they, they had NECA, which makes horror figures and, um, you know, the mask replicas and stuff like that. They make a lot of cool shit. Mm -hmm. They made them stop production on Nightmare on Elm Street figures. Now, what that was looking like was how they did with Friday the 13th. Because when all this lawsuit stuff started, that's the first thing that hit. That's why the Friday the 13th game is just floating out there in the water. I mean, you can still play it, but there's no updates. There's no anything. But um, so A Nightmare on Elm Street was kind of maybe looking the same way. But Freddy went home. That's right. A Nightmare on Elm Street's rights reverted back to the Wes Craven estate. So Wes Craven, well, his estate, because he passed, um, now owns the Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, U.S. rights. Oh. I mean, I think uh, Warner Brothers and uh, the other guys, they, they still own the international, but I mean, you're not just going to release an international movie <laughs> and not release a Nightmare on Elm Street in the States. Right. So, yeah, Freddie went home. I th I think it's awesome. It's really sad, though, that, Wes isn't here with us all to kind of enjoy that. And I, I, I've been reading a lot of, a lot of people are a little worried about this, you know, well, what if they screw up his legacy and stuff like that? And hey, that remains to be seen. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but it's kind of nice to know that Wes Craven's estate owns his creation. I right. Think that's nice. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And it's not in a legal hellhole <laughs> like Jason is. So we may see another Nightmare on Elm Street. D do we want it? <laughs> yes. You do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we haven't touched any Nightmare on Elm Street movies yet. Um, Halloween or our October month is going to be. <laughs> Man, October is jam-packed. There was some stuff I was wanting to throw in there during the month, like little goodies that we cannot do because we don't have the time. And so I had to take them off. But, oh, if you're a faithful listener, you're going to have a good time in October. But, yeah, so I thought that was a nice, nice little bit of news. Like I said, I don't know if this is good, or but 
I, I enjoy knowing that who, the man who created the whole thing owns the rights. I mean, may he rest in peace. Right. So the only thing I have to talk about for this casual horror episode mm-hmm. well, that could come to mind is the new Zombieland. Oh, Double Tap. Yep. Comes out October 6th. What do you think? I'm actually excited about it. Most of the time... So Zombieland... God, what year did that come out? 2009. 2009. So, I mean, it's the been The year long I enough. graduated. It's been long enough that a sequel will be pretty good as, you know, as long as they took the time to write it and stuff. I... I have no ill will towards sequels or remakes. I really don't. <laughs> remakes are kind of a gray area because well, I think I've I think I've said this before, but remakes are kind of dull to me. I, I'm not going to pay to go see them in theaters. I mean, it the it movies are a little different because it's not really a remake. That's more of a new adaptation. But yeah, they're kind of a gray area. But I, as far as sequels go. I don't know if I'm excited for this yet. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm excited or stoked. Like, I would be fine waiting for it to come out on video. Oh, yeah. Because, like I said, it's it's been long. It's been a while. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> come old. out on video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are things I still say that are so age-telling, like, come out on video... Or a uh, album, <laughs> just just words that are a tell of my age, and I don't feel old. I feel like I'm still 14, but <laughs> but no, I, I, I'm cool with it. I'm glad that there's another one coming out. I I haven't heard much about it, and that's on purpose because I'm kind of staying away from trailers <laughs> and news about any movie nowadays. I don't really want to. That's how I do too. Because I mean. Well, we'll talk about it here in just a minute, but like, it just seems like trailers are giving away the entire movie. Yeah. And then they're releasing all sorts of behind the scenes. So by the time the movie actually drops, you have, you've already seen it. So are you excited about Zombieland? I am excited and nervous. Okay. From what I did see, obviously... Um, it's 10 years later. Right, right. And they do show it. Well, from the preview I saw, they are airing it to be 10 years later, how or much longer later. <laughs> I mean, they have to. <laughs> <laughs> because they've, all, they've all aged except for Woody Harrelson. <laughs> that's what I was going to say is vampire. Woody Harrelson never ages. He's like an ugly attractive you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. His kind of like Liam Neeson. No. Although I don't know, Liam Neeson is just kind of attractive, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You can stop. <laughs> well, who, well, who's an ugly attractive? Who's another actor? Uh, Owen Wilson. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's their humor. To me, it's their humor that makes them. That's true, Attractive. because Woody Harrelson is one of those dudes that do. You don't know if he's joking or not. <laughs> he's so straight-faced. He's so good at that deadpan oh, yeah. kind of joke-telling. But but I'm excited um, because Zombieland is one of my favorite movies. And I just hope this one is just as funny as the first one. Yeah, because I remember Zombieland was one of the first movies we kind of bonded over. Like, cause oh, yeah. It, it was one of the movies because I'm – Fuck, I don't have to introduce that I'm a huge horror fan, but <laughs> everybody knows this. But, you know, me being a huge horror buff and stuff like that, and you're not so big, it's kind of nice when there's those movies we've both seen and that we both love. Right, right. And it's just easier to talk about. But, so, like I said earlier, so we're both excited about Zombieland, just not in the gotta buy pre-sale tickets. Right, no. You know what? I've come to the point where in my life where I'm probably never going to go to a midnight premiere again. Oh, yeah, no. That is a young man's game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I think the last midnight premiere we went to wasn't that bad. It was Batman versus Superman. Oh, no wonder I went to sleep then. Oh, you passed right the I forgot the fuck out. that it w- was that late. You went to sleep as soon as the first scene came on, which I don't blame you. Because that movie was like, I, I liked it, but I like shit. <laughs> I like so much shit, so I can't sit here and say it was a great movie. But I will say, just to end the conversation there, is that I do understand why people hate it. Right. It's not good. But, right. yeah, you went right to sleep with that. And that one wasn't too bad. But the one before that, I didn't know you, and I went by myself. And I can't remember what the hell it was. Probably a horror movie. But, um, it's just so many teenagers. <laughs> the one before that that I saw? Uh-huh. Because I don't see movies at night. Um, (laughs) Because I've always had this sleeping problem. Especially if you go by yourself. You're not going to have anybody to wake you up. (laughs) That's true. That's dangerous. But I don't go by myself. So (laughs) yeah, that's not a thing. Um, The last one I saw had to have been Breaking Dawn Part 2. Oh, yeah. Because you were really really into those. Yes, I was. I saw every single one of them um, the night that it premiered and the first showing that they showed it. Because um, I worked at the movie theater mm-hmm. when they first started coming out. Oh, so and you got... And so I got discount tickets. Yeah, you got in there for free. No, I no? got discount tickets. Oh, just discounts? Well, on the premiere nights. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. On the premiere gotta, nights, you have to pay. They gotta make some money off of that, yeah. Yeah. Um, because there's people that will come and sit all day long. And, um, wow. we we had to sit in line. We, we were ticket holders. We had to do the same thing. And so, my friend and I, we would go together. Mm-hmm. And one of us would stay, depending on our work schedules and stuff. One of us would stand in line, and the other one would stand in line, and we'd go get food. Right. And we'd come back, because most theaters will let you bring food in as long as you're standing in line. Right. And um, so we would take turns just standing there. So that was the last midnight premiere you went to? Yes. What? Man, I did. I feel so bad, because you, <laughs> you seem to still, even now, kind of enjoy those movies, but... Man, um, I can't stand them. That's okay. And and it's not because of sparkly vampires or or <laughs> whatever, you know. Most people's main complaint of vampires shouldn't sparkle. Blah, 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 blah. It's like vampires are meant to be super attractive and sexy and that's the whole vampire mythos, so it's fine. That's not even my problem. My problem is those movies are so dull. And so cheaply made <laughs> that it's bad. Well, I wasn't going to see it for the cinematic blah, blah, blah. What did you go to see it for? Well, I read the books. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, well, that that makes sense. Then. I wanted to see it. I read the books. I loved c- the books. I don't think I've ever asked you that, like, why you really went to see those besides liking the movies. Because, like, I was like, well, you don't like Robert Pattinson, that, or Pat. Pattinson? Pattinson? Yeah. Pat- Patterson? Robert Pattinson. Patterson? No, Robert Patterson's the author, isn't he? <sighs> Pattinson. Is anyway. I think it's how um, you say it. I don't <laughs> like vampires. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Pattinson. Um, you don't... Our Pats. Isn't that what everybody was calling him? I don't know. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> um, you don't like him in that way. Like, you don't find no. him sexy. Or, obviously, no. you're not a... What's her name, fan? I don't even want to. Kristen Stewart. I was like, I don't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously not a fan. Um, she's a terrible actress. I don't care what anybody tells me. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, so you did that, but you didn't like it either. So I was always kind of confused on why you were watching them. But well, I okay. guess oh. I like the second one. Okay. And I like the fourth one. Which one was the one where they were like, like they. They had the werewolves talking to each other. 
um, every single one of them? No, but they like their mouths weren't moving because they were in wolf form. Like every single one brains. of them. Oh, did that happen on all of them? <laughs> oh, most of them, yeah. I got. I had an my ex wife, um, drug me to all these in theater, and <laughs> I had some pretty good naps. <laughs> I gotta tell you, so I know I, I a lot of them are hazy. That first one wasn't so bad. Because it was just like a mellow, dra- dramatic piece of shit. So it was kind of fun to sit through. Um, right. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, so that was the last midnight premiere you went to? Yes. And I didn't go to a lot of them because I worked at the movie theater for a long time. So I was working the midnight premieres, not going to them. So speaking of which, like... Like you've been saying, you used to work at a theater. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. (laughs) Is it true that the popcorn, they reuse it? Do they reuse the popcorn? Okay. Um, I can't tell you this for every movie theater. Uh Uh-huh. Because I've only worked in one. Okay. If there is a significant amount of popcorn... Left over when all the movies are done and you're closing up. Theater secrets. <laughs> <laughs> they will bag the popcorn like in a big trash bag with no trash, obviously. Right, right. Just popcorn. And if nobody wants to take it home at the end of the <laughs> night, yes, you could take huge bags of popcorn imagine, home. I just imagine like who's going to take a giant bag of popcorn home? A lot of people. Like. What do you do with that? You just sit on it like a beanbag? Just eat out of it? Sure. <laughs> what the fuck? I never took any home, so I don't know. But <laughs> um, but if um, nobody took the bags home, uh-huh. they would – what they would do is they would, in the morning, start a fresh batch of popcorn and mix in the old popcorn with the new popcorn. Oh, Okay. So I mean, it wasn't just like a bag of old popcorn. It was just kind of mixed in. I mean, I could sit here and be like, ew, but it's it's just fucking popcorn. It's not going to It's go just bad. like if you bought a bag of popcorn from the corner <laughs> it's, and yeah. it's already pop popcorn or whatever, and you seal the bag overnight, and then you go back and you eat it in the morning. But I mean, but then again, I'll eat two day old cheddar poppers <laughs> that have been sitting out on the That's true. table for two days. But, but you can request to have a fresh bath to popcorn. Oh, okay. Now, if you do that and there's like a million people in line and you do that, uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's the first show of the day or like in the middle of the day and there's not a whole lot of people there – most of the time, the concession stand people don't mind doing that. Right, right. So, so fun times at the movie theater. <laughs> the worst thing is do not eat the hot dogs. Ew. I don't eat any of those. Those, that was worse than the popcorn because they did reuse the hot dogs. Yeah, I don't. I don't touch anything <laughs> besides popcorn in a movie theater. I'm not uh, buying it. And the candy, dinner. sir. Well, yeah, you gotta <laughs> get some candy. You get some, some Twizzlers. Up no, the you gotta get a purse. Or a backpack. See, but I'm a guy, so let me wear my. I mean, okay, I'm a guy. I know dudes can carry backpack, but it looks suspicious. A chubby, overweight individual like myself carrying in a backpack. <laughs> yeah, but I've tried to do that before when we gone to the theater, and you're like, "No, we're not doing that." I'm Have like, I been that tied up on it? Shit. We yeah. Po. We need. To, That's what we I'm need saying. To do that more often. That's anyway. what I'm saying. I wouldn't mind going to the movie theater, and I wouldn't mind taking the kids. But you think that we have to have popcorn and all of this stuff. Back in my day, we popped a bag of popcorn, put it in a Ziploc bag, took our (laughs) own fucking candy, put it in our bags, and we went. Man, this really has turned into old people bitching about stuff. Oh, shit. You just just pulled it back in my day. (laughs) Fuck. Sorry. So... (laughs) So theater <laughs> secrets. Um. So, um, like we said earlier, so we were talking about movie trailers and stuff like that earlier. And like I said, this is okay. What I'm about to say next is is a good example about this. Have you seen the trailer for the uh, new 
Black Christmas remake. No. Well, it's the second remake of the old Bob Clark movie. I think we've maybe talked about it a few times on the show. I'm, I'm not really too sure. But it's the second remake. Now, the first remake they did back in 2000s was, I think it was decent. It's just a s- typical slasher movie. It wasn't as good as the first one, which, you know, they never are. I'm past that point. <laughs> but this new one, it looks okay. I don't know. You'll have to watch the trailer. So we'll watch the trailer sometime. But here's my problem with it. It's not the movie itself. It's just that the trailer shows you the first trailer. The first trailer they put out, okay. mind you. Okay. Shows you the entire fucking movie. I know what happens in this movie. Are you sure? Yeah. Somebody's killing off the co-eds. Co-eds find out someone's killing them off, and it's related to this underground society. What? That may include their professor, Carrie Elwes. Oh my god, all in one... So the girls decide they're not going to get killed anymore, and they turn the tables. And they start killing off the society. Oh god. Cool, cool premise. Don't call it Black Christmas, but that's a whole episode of me bitching about why you shouldn't even call this movie Black Christmas. But, (laughs) because they're like... Because everybody's talking about, oh, but it's its own thing. This is what we want from a remake. It's not a fucking remake if it's its own thing. This is a different right. movie. Call it a different thing. Don't ride the name. Don't do that. That pisses me off. But anyway. Right. The movie looks okay. Or the premise sounds okay. But I know what happens now. I, why would I see the movie? It's not for the fantastic acting. Oh, God. So why the fuck am I going to go see your movie after you... And that's why... That's why I've made it a specific point. It was before this trailer, but now it's definitely after this trailer. Making a specific point to stay away from movie trailers and any info. As much as I can, I don't want to know. I don't even read reviews anymore. I just want to see it raw. (laughs) Like the. Are we 80? I think so. This whole episode is just us <laughs> bitching about stuff. I'm not even 30 yet. <laughs> Back in my day, a movie trailer was two shots and then Alfred Hitchcock talking about birds. That's what we had. We didn't know it, what, what the fuck was going to happen in the movie. But... <laughs> <laughs> but really, back a while back, like you did, you saw a trailer. Well, hell, we didn't have the internet when I was younger. Now that I think about it, fuck, <laughs> we cannot get away from this back in my day bullshit tonight. Oh God! But for real though, <laughs> don't show the entire movie in your trailer. I know. That's what they did. The same thing to Batman versus Superman. The only reason I went and saw that midnight premiere was because Batman. Like, yeah. I knew the entire movie. You wanted to see Ben Affleck in that suit? Yeah, and shirtless, but <laughs> another podcast. <laughs> Talking oh about God. Ben Affleck's abs. Oh, um, God. <laughs> but, um, we really need to talk about your sexuality. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's okay. You can be whatever you want to be. I can be whatever I want to be. <laughs> oh my goodness but anyway that's my gripe about movie trailers so another headline that i saw <laughs> <laughs> moving on another headline that i saw getting away from the back in my day shit um uh fed fed alvarez is producing the next texas chainsaw massacre film now there's gonna be another yeah there's always gonna be another okay <laughs> movie um now, Fed Alvarez directed the uh, Evil Dead remake, which you saw this. I did? Yeah, you saw it with your sister, Whitney. Oh, that's right. We did watch part yeah. of it when yeah. she was in the hospital. Oh, you only watched part? Yeah, I walked in and part of it. Okay, well, anyway, you've seen bits and pieces of it. Yeah. We need to cover that on the show. We haven't covered any remakes yet, really, unless you count the thing. But <gasps> The thing is a remake? Uh, yeah, technically it's yeah. We talked about it. In the episode. Uh, I don't remember. You need to listen to our episode. <laughs> I need to remember what you say um, when you ramble on. I know. And on. You... 
I need to actually listen to you. Oh my god. So anyway, he directed Fed Alvarez directed the Evil Dead remake. And uh so I mean I like that Evil Dead remake. I actually enjoyed that movie. Uh but so he's producing the next one. Now this is not um gonna now this is not gonna be tied to those remakes that came. Okay. This is more gonna be like a new series of movies. Okay. Kind of based on Toby Hooper's original. And so um there's also talks of a television series. Oh god. <laughs> I can't do it. Here's my thing. I have such a hard on for these movies. That you're gonna watch the TV show? I will watch whatever Texas Chainsaw Massacre bullshit you throw at me. Oh god. If it's you know what I would pay to see and damn it, he's not alive anymore, but I would have paid to see a movie about Dennis Hopper's character from the second film <laughs> just chainsaw fighting across America. I would have paid just to see <laughs> 10 hours of Dennis Hopper slicing the air with a chainsaw, <laughs> which when we cover Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, I think I'm going to convert you on <laughs> the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. But Okay. No, so anyway, I love these movies, and so this is kind of exciting. Because I like Fed Alvarez. I think he's a really capable guy. <laughs> I thought you said Fat Alvarez. I was like, Fats what? Alvarez. <laughs> like Fats Domino? No, it's thing like I Fat Alvarez. Found my freedom. Oh my God. I'm blueberry here. All right, we're going to be here for four hours. Of <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm excited about that. So that that's that's a that's a little neat headline I read that I really hope. I hope it turns out good. I hope it turns out better than Texas Chainsaw 3D. <laughs> and that weird Leatherface movie they made that I had no idea what they were trying to do. <sighs> <laughs> so here's hoping that turns out to be good. So well, Rambo so. sucked, apparently. There was a new Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, it's been all over the news. <laughs> I don't have time for the news. But, uh, yeah, apparently people are talking about it sucked. Sorry, that was, there's no story to go along with this, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just like, oh, this shit, sucks. the new Rambo sucked. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell me what you've heard about It Chapter 2. Oh, man. So I haven't seen it yet. Me either. God, I'm, I'm dying to because the things I've heard are so exciting. First of all, I've heard that the best part of the entire movie is Bill Hader, which, woo, Bill Hader. Uh, Bill Hader's from Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Yeah, so Bill Hader's a, Bill Hader's a, okay. Go and Bill. For those of you that don't know, Broken Arrow is our next door neighbor. <laughs> it's of like Tulsa. right down the street. Like, yeah, how I drive there Oklahoma every day. works is the towns are right next to each other. Like, close. Like, close. in California, I think you got to drive miles to get to another town, right? Yeah. Um, so, technically, where we live, we live by Sepulpa. We're literally one mile from Sepulpa. Yeah, we're like four blocks away from Sand Springs. Yeah. These are all towns in Oklahoma, if you're not aware. And then, on the other side of Tulsa is Broken Arrow, but my work is like right on the border yeah of broken arrow and tulsa they kind of like mesh all of it meshes it's together a, it's a weird grid system we live out here yeah uh, but so yeah i've heard bill Hader is amazing in it obviously scars guard is fucking awesome in it i think honestly god people are gonna murder me in my sleep for this <laughs> i think he's the best pennywise we've had now wait Hang that on. we've don't had. don't don't hit me wait no no i have a question Oh, shit. Is this one of those I haven't seen anything questions? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, the internet's going to kill you. No, okay. I've seen it. Right, right. Obviously. But you said it's the best one. He's the best one we've ever had. We've only had one, right? Nope. The TV show? Oh, well, that one. But we had another one. We did? Yeah. Well, not us. But I think India did. Oh, okay. That's India. Not which I've count. never seen it, just seen bits and pieces. It looks fucking weird. But yeah, there's a uh, there's an Indian it. I think it's called like fuck, I don't even remember. 
Watt, like W-O-T. Oh. Look up a picture of it while you're over there. And I'll talk while you look it up. But um, yeah, so I felt like, God, I love I love his Pennywise. It's great. If I've read the book, and it feels just like the book. Uh, Tim Curry's Pennywise, though, will always rank above him, if that makes any sense. I know I said Skarsgård's the best, but as far as... <sighs> Fuck, it's so hard. <laughs> because they're so on par. I'm just going to cut it down the middle and piss everyone off and say... Skarsgård's the best new Pennywise, and Tim Curry's the best old one. There you go. <laughs> that makes no sense. But there you have it. Because I can't decide. I'm... <sighs> anyway. But yeah, so... I've heard Skarsgård's awesome. I have heard they go a little overboard on the CGI, but... I've also heard they execute it in a way where it's kind of like the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Like, this is Machete's, like... Nightmare on Elm Street series almost on how they use the CGI and the dream like stuff happening. And that sounds fun. Like if this movie doesn't scare me and the visuals are off the fucking charts, that shit crazy. I'm going to have a damn good time watching this movie. Kind of like that first one. You know, that first one didn't really scare me too much. But with that first one, I really loved the nostalgia of the kids. I really love those actors. And I also liked the uh, the effects and just the, the the tone of that movie is just so good. And so that's what caused me to really like it. But um, yeah, I've heard nothing. I've heard great things. I've also heard awful things and not just bad reviews of people who didn't like the movie. I also heard complaints that don't make any sense. So in the book, there is a uh, scene where a uh, homosexual man, um, he gets beaten and thrown off a bridge by actual people, not the clown. But he also gets eaten by Pennywise. It's a whole thing to kind of lure the older kids back to Derry. But, I mean, if we ever cover those movies, we'll go into that. But, um, so, there is the, that scene they recreated in the movie. The homosexual guy gets beaten up and thrown off the bridge. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's all there. They do a pretty good job of it. I was listening to a podcast that will remain nameless because I don't attack people on this show. That's not what we're about. Everybody's entitled to their opinions, but you're not entitled to this opinion because you're stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, and you know who you are. Uh, you're are, not are listening you sure? to this, first of all. <laughs> uh, but So what this person said was, that was unrealistic and stupid, because that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. Because this new movie, obviously, you know, the old, the first chapter took place in the 80s. This one takes place now. Okay. So their complaint about that scene was that that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. I'm lost. What kind of stuff doesn't happen? Oh, um, the gay attacks. Oh, okay. Sorry. People attacking uh, homosexuals and LGBTQ. Me? Yeah. They uh, said that that shit doesn't happen anymore. So that oh, scene. Really? Doesn't make any sense. Uh, now I haven't seen oh the movie, so God. that scene may be out of place. I don't know yet, so you know, don't come attacking me if it is out of place. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, but you, you need you that... need to put down the fucking Cheetos <laughs> and the poi crines, whatever the fuck your greasy fat fingers are in, and I'm fat too, so I get to say this. And come out of your mom's basement and join the rest of society for a little while, okay? That's when, what you need to do. When it was Gay Pride Month and all the Gay Pride stuff was going on and everybody's talking about having a straight parade and all that bullshit with the straight parade shit. Yeah, okay. and it's actually, bullshit in my opinion. Sorry, my opinion. Anyway. No, no, no. It's fine. Anybody who has an opposite opinion of what we just said can go fuck themselves. I don't. I don't so, even listening to the show. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you saw that people were still fucking getting attacked. Yeah. The, the gay people were getting attacked, but the fucking Nazis were protected by the goddamn police. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Sorry. We're turning into a political show. <laughs> Not really, though. For real, though. This, for real. I, 
I get very heated about this. Yeah, me too. That's why I think I'm getting a little, a little angry. But yeah, that was their fucking complaint. <laughs> well, they can go shove a dick up their ass. Not to mention all the stuff, because, you know, I've I've read the book and shit like that. And so I know the entire story. So I, I listened to a bunch of reviews of that movie because I know the story. So it's not like much is going to get ruined for me. And it sounds like they... They were pretty faithful to the story, so that's which good. bravo! And they good, redid the endings, huh? That's good because that's a tough story. Oh my god, that ending's unfilmable, and they had to change it for the this movie, which is fine, right? Because the ending has a turtle that pukes up the universe, and <laughs> there's a ritual they have to do where they bite onto each other's tongues. It's all sorts of off the wall, but they redid it, and it sounds really nice, but. They were comparing the gay undertones because there are gay undertones in it. Um, I'm not going to say what they are in case you haven't seen this either. You know, our viewer or our list, our viewers. I keep talking about this like it's some kind of cable network channel. Um, our listeners, and just in case they haven't seen it, so I won't release any spoilers here. But they they were saying the gay undertones and all that stuff is just thrown in to be relevant. Uh. And here's my beef with that. Maybe it is thrown in to be relevant. Now, that first scene of the movie, if you had read the book, you would know that's in the book. So you're wrong on that. But I feel like that's the right thing to do is continue that undertone throughout the entire movie. Because in the book, there's just that scene. And it's weird and random. Okay. Because in the book, it happens. They kind of investigate it a little bit. It kind of goes deeper into that. But there's no – nobody gets – nobody touches on anything later on. He was just thrown in – he was just beaten up and thrown into the river because he's gay and Pennywise happened to eat him. So it was just kind of odd. But I could sit here and talk about odd moments in that book all day. <laughs> we got to move on though. But anyway, we got to see It Chapter 2. Those people can go fuck themselves for I don't I don't even know what to call it. Is it quasi gay bashing nowadays where people kinda hide behind weird shit to bitch about things? Like where they're bitching oh, about maybe. that there's a female character in Star Wars now and it's just What? What kind of fucking world do we live in anymore? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Before we get really angry. Hey everybody, Lee here. Normally I uh insert a joke here or some kind of coming to streaming soon kind of thing. But I thought I'd take a little time out to thank you, the listener. You know, I started the show as a simple hobby, and now it's kind of starting to t gain some ground and take off. And that's thanks to you. And the support we've gotten on the show here has been amazing. You know, my anxiety usually keeps me from uh, socializing, which uh, has been a problem for the longest time. But the podcast is kind of breaking me out of my shell. I now phone myself gravitating toward wanting to go to conventions now and uh, wanting to socialize with more people, wanting to talk to people on the phone again. It's been great. So again, thank you for the support, and I hope you stick around because we have a lot more content to bring you. Back to the show. So we put out a call to action here to kind of get some uh, letters from our listeners. Which we have listeners, isn't that great? That sounds amazing. I know. Even if there's just ten of you, that's cool. Hi, ten of you. I know. That's so cool. I'm, I, I never thought anybody would fucking listen to this because when we set out to do this show, I was like, okay, so we'll set out with the plan to do this weekly. Now, if we don't get much listeners, we'll cut it down to bi-weekly and it'll just be a nice little hobby. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, well, I told myself that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but so that's what we that's what I set out to do. I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. But um, so I thought, you know, just cut it back and maybe do do it here and there if it's not a big deal. But uh, damn, the support we've received so far just from the few people has been amazing. So thank you for that. Thanks, Laura. But, um, Thanks, Seth. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> uh, but so we sent out a little thing saying, you know what? Send us in some questions. Send us in some stories. I think I even said nudes. Don't send nudes. Don't. <laughs> Don't do that. It's a joke. 
It is a joke. Unless you want to send your butt cheeks in a bra, make it look like <laughs> boobs, so I can laugh about it. That'd be funny. Okay, funny nudes. Send funny nudes. It's <laughs> so funny. Oh. Oh, but, those ones where they make the eyeball look like a vagina. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> we sent that into the Twitter sphere and you know asked for your tweets, asked for your emails of stories, things you want to ask us. The blood and, of your firstborn child. You know, you might want to send that through the parcel. I don't know <laughs> the parcel. Oh my god! How old are we? I didn't say parcel. Jesus you did. How Christ. old are you? I don't know anymore. I really don't. Um, I had to cut back on my drinking, so I'm not thinking very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so we sent that out and we asked for your questions and you did not disappoint. I'm so excited that we have some. We don't have a ton, which is fine. We'll get to you. But I think for every casual horror episode, if we have some some stuff in the mailbag, uh, we're going to read it. And yeah. just a fun little extra thing for you. So if you want to write in any letters or any stories, any questions you want us to read on air, uh, send it to horrorfilemailbag at gmail.com. That's horrorfilemailbag at gmail.com. And uh, that's where you can send that in. Or you can just fucking tweet it at us. I don't care. <laughs> so we'll start with tweets. Um, Seth at beernut1. <laughs> Hi, I love, Seth. I love that fucking name, by the way. Um, <laughs> hey, Seth. So Seth writes on Twitter. Uh, he said, not sure if you would want to read this on an episode, which we do. Thank you, Seth. But uh, what are a few of each of your, um, me and you, Brittany? Uh, oh, really? The <laughs> other podcast hosts? Yeah. Well, the other guys in the back. Um, <laughs> he better get me a beer. <laughs> Yo! Hey, hey Yo. intern! Beer! Baby! All right, anyway. Michael! Michael, get me out there! All right, anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that went Holy a little shit. too far. Um, he writes, uh, what are a few of each of your favorite movies, horror or non-horror? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. And he says, obviously, love the podcast, a lot of good reviews and knowledge. Thank you, Seth. Well, I'll go ahead and start while you think. Um, let's start with non-horror because I feel like we're going to touch on all sorts of horror movies. So, I mean, I'll throw it out there. If I had to pick a horror movie, had to stick with it. It's got to be a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was one of the first horror movies I ever saw. And it's the one I love the most because I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I really don't. I'm really just, surprised by this answer. Just really like that movie. Why? Because I really thought you were going to say The Evil Dead. The Evil Dead comes second. They're kind of on par with each other. I don't know how to explain it. But um, but that's if I had to pick, you know. Which I guess I do to answer Seth's question. <laughs> Non-horror, though. Oh, that's a toughie because we don't talk about it much on this. I don't talk. We don't really talk about ourselves that much on this show because, I don't know, I feel like it's not about us. It's about <laughs> making a connection with you, the listener. And talking about horror movies and what it took to make them and stuff like that and making those more important. But I love all genres of film. So it's so difficult for me to find one. Let's see. So let's do five favorite non-horror movies. Oh, I would God. say – I know. it's It could be 20. But <laughs> I'm saving you the time. I would say – Casablanca. Don't know. Just really love that movie. <laughs> Did you see it. my face? <laughs> no. I was like, what the <laughs> what? What the fuck? Casablanca. Citizen Kane. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best movie of all time. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. <laughs> um, no, Casablanca. Uh, Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Because I am I love Westerns. I used to watch those all the time with my dad. Uh, he really got me into westerns. Um, ooh, ooh, this is hard. Escape from New York. 
Oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, because I remember I made you watch that with me when we were dating. 500 times? You were like, this movie sucks. I'm pretty sure you watched that every single day. That's when I fell in love with you because you weren't trying to, you weren't trying to blow smoke up my ass because I remember I was like, what'd you think? You were like, I thought it sucked. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yes. I don't know why. Um, oh shit. This is so hard. This is a good question, Seth. Thank you. Uh, let's see another one. Non horror. <laughs> oh, this is harder than I thought it would be. You know what? Christmas vacation. <gasps> I gotta throw that on there. And one more. Let me dig deep. You know what? Even though it has a lot of problems if you watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest Gump. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Forrest Gump. That's my go to. So, Brittany, you want to do five? Don't say my name like that. I know. We don't call each other by our name. <laughs> no. Um, You want to do five? Five what? Shots? You well, let's shots? do non-horror because you don't haven't okay. seen enough to really pick horror movies that are your favorite yet. Uh, Carrie, duh. Well, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that could change. It could change, right. But as of right now, Carrie. Right. And I have to say Blair Witch 2 is yeah, a very up, close second. Yeah, you ended up really liking that movie. I was I, Yeah. I, I thought you would, but I was kind of surprised that you liked it that much. So <laughs> Kind of strange. So five non-horror movies. Go. Oh god. <laughs> okay. I'm weird and I'm a girl and I grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s, mm-hmm. well, the 2000s. So eh, this might make sense for all of this, okay? I have to go with 10 Things I Hate About You. Ooh, good one. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. That's the Matthew McConaughey. Um, Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson. Movie, mm-hmm. Yeah. Non-horror. Um, <laughs> I do have to go with Forrest Gump also. Yeah. It's just... That is one of my go-to yeah. movies that I have to watch. There's a movie I haven't seen in a long time, but I used to watch it all the time when I was growing up. It's called 13. And now that has sorry to it's cut got you off. Holly Hunter. Yeah, in it. Holly Hunter. That's the first thing I ever saw Holly Hunter in. Isn't that weird? Oh, that's funny because yeah. you totally see her boobs. Yeah, you do, don't you? Uh huh. Oh yeah. I've seen her boobs a lot. And then she ended up in Batman versus Superman talking about Granny's pee. Yeah. That's, that's sad. I fuck. Anyway, go on. Um. And if you haven't seen that movie, it is currently on Hulu, I believe. Oh, is it? Maybe it's HBO. Oh. Maybe it's Showtime. We have all the things. <laughs> right. So I'm like, meh, I don't know. <laughs> um, And it is definitely just a teenage movie, but it stuck with me. Anyway. And number five would have to be, and I just thought of it too. Damn it. <laughs> I lost it out of my brain. Um, where did it go? <laughs> Still Magnolias. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a good movie with Sally Field. Yeah. Oh, speaking about Sally Field, I didn't even say Smokey and the Bandit. Is that one of your favorites? Oh, yeah, man. That's a great fucking movie. It's one of those ones I really questioned it the other day because a Jerry Reed tune came on and I was like, why the fuck don't I own Smokey and the Bandit? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get on that. But, um, uh, so yeah, that, fuck, that was hard. It is hard. Like, because I love so many movies. Me too. There's not a lot I dislike besides, I mean, the obvious, the stuff that is not made for me. (laughs) There are some things like that. You know what's weird is I noticed that I really don't like my horror movies to be complex. I really like them to be like kill, 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 like straight, like a slasher movie. Like, I don't want to know about the people. You're not. I just want them to die. (laughs) <laughs> and you're not saying you hate those movies because right. you, you you just haven't seen one that you like so far. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I get you. You don't want to sit there and think too much. Right. Uh, but I do movies. like my drama movies and my like rom-coms and stuff to right, be like right. that. Yeah, I get you. Those are the um, ones you want to sit down and think about. Right. That's kind of cool. I get you there. Because I want the killing. I want the guts, I want the glory, I want the chainsaws, I want the axes to the eyeballs, I want it all. 
So Brittany's yeah. going to be soaking wet this holiday season <laughs> in October <laughs> because it's all slasher yes. all month. Yes. Um, <clears throat> besides a few of our treats, which oh, I'm so excited, but I can't tell anybody about them. Um, I know some. Yes, you do. <laughs> so let's move on with some tweets. Um, <laughs> by the way, a little mention here. Um, Justine uh, at In a Dark Room sent us a, a nude. It's uh, Professor Farnsworth taking off his clothes. Let me see. And she said, here you go. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so there's our nudes for the month. You said Justine. And oh, you were you thinking said, about your sister. Yeah, and sent a nude. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Wait, my sister's sending you fucking nudes? <laughs> I might have to kill someone. Like, look, it's your sister's boobs. Cool. Ew. <laughs> uh... Oh, shit. Does she listen? No. Oh, good. Okay. I just threw up. And I didn't want to hurt uh, anyone's whatever. feelings. Anyway, it's your sister. Of course I'm going to throw up. Um, <laughs> so moving on. Uh, Zool uh, at No Kim Only Zool, which is an amazing name. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Uh, I know you haven't. Have you seen Ghostbusters? No. Remember, there's there's no Dana, only Zool. Anyway, it's a play off of that. Oh, so okay. No Kim Only Zool writes on Twitter. She tweeted us. I would like to know what some of yours and Brittany's favorite books are, horror or non. Oh. Which is another good question. This is a very good question. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to pick five because I've never been a huge reader. I am. I've read a lot of books, but not so much where I have a top, you know, list. Not as much as movies, you know. Right. But obviously anything by Edgar Allan Poe, and I know that sounds... You know, cliche. cliche, but it's an, I, I fucking love Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> I own a giant tomb of all his works over there on the bookshelf, <laughs> um, which I take down and I read every once in a while, especially when you have a big glass. Well, a big glass. I just made myself sound like an alcoholic. But <laughs> when you have a glass of brandy or something and it's just quiet, even though that's kind of a luxury over here. That's not our lives. Yeah, that's not our lives at all. And that's maybe why I don't read a lot. But that's definitely why I don't read anymore. Yeah. But when you have like two toddlers jumping on you. Oh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just an, it's it's they're good reads and they're creepy and they're imaginative and they're weird. And I mean, not a lot of people give Edgar Allan Poe for being like the person who basically conceptualized and came up with the detective story. But um, so I'd say anything by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, it, the book, that's one of the Stephen King books I love. Uh, another favorite would have to be Salem's Lot. Oh. And, well, shit, most of anything by Stephen King I like, that I've read, <laughs> that I've read. Um, you know what, I've, I've read a lot of biographies and autobiographies. I really love autobiographies. Um, I've read uh, some of my favorites of that are, uh, and that's mostly what I read now that I think about it. Um, the ones I like of that is Bruce Campbell's. Uh, I've read Richard Dawkins. If you don't know who that is, look him up. Uh, I've read a few older ones. Like I think there's a Teddy Roosevelt one I read a long time ago. I can't really remember, but I like biographies. Those are great. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman's books are amazing make your own damn movie works as a biography of trauma studios and it's fucking badass but yeah so i really and i don't i'm not going to tell you i don't have the time to read i just don't read as often as i'd like to i really need to get on that that's something we were talking about obviously i've read a shit ton of graphic novels we won't even get into that but so what about you sorry i'm looking for you know um, while you're looking, um, audiobooks are perfect if you ever like can get a hold of them. I think, you know, someone tweet us because I think there's a some subscription services for audiobooks. I, I I don't know it off the top of my head right now, but I'm I'm thinking about getting back into that because that would be perfect because I listen to podcasts and stuff while I'm working, and it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to pop on an audiobook, you know. Right. Maybe I can devour some books I've never read before. Oh, another book I want to throw in there. 
as a as a nice <laughs> little mention while you're looking up your stuff. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, biography he he did his autobiography was, I think it came out five or six years ago, but man, that was good. Talk about an inspirational guy and not talking about the sleeping around on his wife, but man, that guy came from nothing. <laughs> but I, and that's why I like autobiographies. Cause you take like big celebrities like that and you don't realize that they really did work right. to get where they are. You know, not everybody's a Cheeto who could borrow money from his father, but. Again, we're not a political podcast, so we won't go into that. Right. So, what I'm looking for is, when I was a teenager, I was really into the this author. Mm -hmm. And I cannot find her. Uh, but I did find another book that I really loved. Go Ask Alice. Now, what's that about? I don't know too much about books. Go Ask Alice is a book about a 15-year-old girl that be develops a drug habit, and she runs away from home, um, and it's in a, like, a diary form, uh -huh. and just about this teenage girl with a drug problem. I don't know. It was really, it was actually very captivating, Oh, and it was the first book that I really got into as a teenager. And uh, we ended up, like, passing this book around to all of our friends. And I have the book somewhere um, where all of my friends had signed it, saying that they, like, read it. Oh, cool. Um, I have it somewhere. But anyway, that was my first real, like, I love to read kind of things. Um, but I'd have to say books that I really loved... Um, the number one book that I really, really loved, uh, as an adult, uh -huh. and it sounds weird, is, uh, The Fault in Our Stars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me about that. Right. So, I read the book probably three times before I saw the movie because I loved the book so much. Um, and I cried. I bawled like a baby every time and every time i see the movie i ball like a baby but i did love the book better than the movie because they left a lot of stuff out oh, yeah. that's actually really important to the story they left out of the movie and i'm like bitch you stupid <laughs> <laughs> why didn't you include that <laughs> anyway um i haven't had a chance to read a lot as an adult so a lot of the books i read was when I was a teenager and they were all like um, these diary style books or these poem style books. Um, there was one and everybody knows, I'm sure if you ever went to a bookstore and looked in like the teen section, you'd see the book called Crank. Oh yeah. 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 I know what yeah. you're talking about. I read those books too. And those are also, um, I call them poem style books, but they're like, I guess, diary style books, whatever, where they're not full pages. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, I know what you're talking about. But it tells a story. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I really liked those. I haven't had a chance in my adult life to read a whole lot. Um, I t here's something for our listeners is... Uh -huh. I've been a mother since I was 19. <laughs> I'm 29 now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be 30. So, well, I got pregnant when I was 19. Mm. I had my my oldest son when I was 20. So, I've been a mom for almost 10 years now and haven't had a chance to read. <laughs> yeah. I've been a dad for 11. <laughs> So, yeah, a big chunk of our lives has been dedicated to raising little people. Right. Uh, <laughs> but so it is easier to pop in a movie yeah, than it is to read a book. Thing. That's the thing. But um, that's why we don't have a book club. <laughs> <laughs> we have a podcast. Yeah, we have a podcast. <laughs> but so I would I would say a book I would actually want you to read would be um, – and I can't believe I didn't add this to my list. But uh, the Hunter S. Thompson – book um 
Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Excellent story. Really? Yeah, it's it's great. And it's told in like a diary format because it's about him. Because Hunter S. Thompson was a journalist and it's kind of like a diary of that, but not really. It's so weird because there's this other personalities and drug use all through it. It's pretty cool. I think you'd like it. But so moving on, the mailbag is <laughs> giving us some cool shit. So uh, the Rex, um, which this is in our mailbag on email form. Oh, cool. So this is if you want your name written aloud, send it in. If you don't, let me know or don't send in a name. Right. Just uh, letting you we guys know. Anonymous. If you want to remain anonymous, it's cool. Right. Um, so this guy writes, the Lords of Salem is wicked. It's one of the greatest witch movies of all time. And we just covered our first witch movie. On, well, not our first. Uh, what the fuck am I talking about? We had, uh, Suspiria. <sighs> so we're a little, we're getting a little versed in witches here. Uh, Lords of Salem is something you haven't seen yet. It's, uh, Rob Zombie's film. Okay. Um, and it's one that nobody talks about because not a lot of people like this movie. I saw it in like a limited theater thing and I fucking loved it. It's a throwback to these uh, witchcraft movies. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> Blair Witch 2 is kind of more the dumbest of all right. the witch movies I've ever seen because it tries these kind of th weird imagery and stuff, but it doesn't really get on par with something like Suspiria. Well, or... I don't think it was trying to. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's just a cash grab um, that turned out to be awesome. But it's not a part of like Suspiria. That's a good witch movie. Uh, you have a lot of other movies from the 70s that are about witchcraft that I can't think of off the top of my head, but we'll get to. <laughs> but um, it's more like that. It's really mood heavy. <laughs> Uh huh. And, but it's not a lot of thinking because I know you said you didn't like to sit here and think through your movies. <laughs> not a lot of that. I mean, the plot is pretty straightforward. It's about a a radio DJ played by Sherry Moon Zombie, um, and she gets a uh, record that summons witches in this Salem town. Anyway, I'll, you know we'll probably cover it, so I don't have to go too far into it, but. Yeah, it's one of my favorite Rob Zombie movies. It's one of my favorites of his because it's one of the movies where he's truly out of the box on it. It kind of feels like he didn't limit himself to one kind of genre and he oh. just went crazy because there's That's so good. much weird fucking imagery in that movie that it's creepy as hell. Like I said, it's mood heavy and it's just scary. So The Rex, I got to agree with you. Um it's probably one of the, I wouldn't say one of the greatest movies of all time. I'm not going to give you that. <laughs> <laughs> like I've always preached that the greatest film or movie of all time has not been made yet. Um, and it probably never will be because film is an evolving art form. It will always keep changing and it has to keep changing or it'll become stagnant and die. I right. Mean, there's a reason why you don't see too much Western movies much anymore. And the only Western movies that we get and people really love is something like Bone Tomahawk, where it's like a Western horror type thing. It's a hybrid. Machete. Wait, Machete. I don't think that's a that's Western. That's not a horror movie. <laughs> that's more of a grindhouse flick, and we'll get to stuff like that. That was terrible. <laughs> you just gave me I know jet. nothing. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I was just thinking of Danny Tran. But. What? Um. What? I said I was just thinking of Danny Trejo. Oh, yeah. But, um... <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you said... No, no, what? I wasn't talking to you. I thought you were yelling at me. <laughs> I was like, what? What did I do? But Lords of Salem is probably, in my opinion, one of Rob Zombie's greatest horror... Or greatest movies. I, th I think it's really great. So moving on. Da, da, da. We have Iced. Uh, and I'm not going to read the name that came along with your email because I don't think you want people to know that. But um, <laughs> so we're going to go with what you signed off on the email with. So anyway, I'll read this now. Um, I'm in need of some help. You see, I live on the edge of a forest and there is this witch who has been bothering me. She will stand at the edge of the forest and just stare at me. It makes me uncomfortable. One time I tried spraying her with water. <laughs> This, oh god damn like in the old wizard of oz movie um this seemed to work a little bit 
She disappeared for a few days, but she came back and put a curse on my dog. He just well, speaks in gibberish and runs into walls now. That's what you get. <laughs> I know that you're doing a discussion on Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows, and I thought you may know a more permanent solution to my issue. Your friend, Iced. Okay, I can answer this question. Ooh, okay. I get to not talk for a minute. <laughs> okay, this is what you do. I have no professional experience. <laughs> But this is what, what you do. You're not do. a professional witch hunter? <laughs> no. I haven't hung out with Jeff enough. Good guy, That's his Jeff. name, Jeff, right? Good guy, Jeff. From yep, Jeff. I haven't Jeff hung out with Jeff enough to know, but I do know I've had enough fantasies about... What's the Wiccan's name? What was the Wiccan's name in that movie? Erica? Yes. Okay, sorry. I know that I've had enough fantasies about Erica, the Wiccan, to know how to handle this situation. Do you have the finger blaster? No. <laughs> that's how you oh, get Oh, that's the... just what I would do. Okay. <laughs> You're not allowed. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she's not for you. <laughs> just let me have my thing, okay? Okay. 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 Anyway. When she comes close to you, you have to start speaking her language. Like, if she's talking to you, you just repeat what she says, okay? Because you're going to learn the language. Whatever kind of witch she is, you're going to learn what she's saying. You're going to look this up. Google is your friend. Then you're going to learn how to do spells. Then... Once you get good at these spells, you're going to use them on her. And if it doesn't work because she's a better witch than you, because she's been a witch for longer, then... You use the bacon sizzle? No. Damn it. Then you just have to invite her into your house and have her teach your spells and stuff, and then you guys become a witch cult together. Perfect solution. And, and uh, not by experience, <laughs> but I will tell you <laughs> that, that if you make friends with a coven of witches... In real life, not in the movies, because they'll kill you in the movies. If you can stand to sit through what they're talking about for very long, they will get naked at some point. Perfect. So hang around. Don't be mean. Don't be rude. And nakedness will come your way. <laughs> okay. I mean, but in all seriousness, I don't know. Yeah, I, if water I didn't work, I'm out of ideas. That's scary. If what I didn't think work? Water. He tried water. It didn't work. I mean, is that what you're supposed to do to witches? Well, let's use Google real fast. How do you kill a witch? Oh, God. Um, well, apparently you buy this bottle of witch powder from this guy offline in California. And there you oh, go. Okay. Um, this says, can you name any other spells to instantly kill a witch? See, I told you, you just, just become one. <laughs> That's true. I think magic can fight magic. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Or ice magic. Or five ways to kill a witch. Or finger blasting. Oh my god. Because if you do that thing where you curl your fingers upward a little Stop. bit. Stop. Like towards Stop. you. If you're facing the witch. This is a <laughs> PG podcast. It is not. <laughs> I was talking about Kevin Bacon's ass on the Friday the 13th episode anyway move it on <laughs> not everybody wants you to do that nobody wants you to do that oh now i just went back to high school <laughs> 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 anyway um so that's the mailbag for this month uh, not <laughs> not a lot of letters but we got some isn't that exciting that's awesome i love that thank you for writing in Everybody wrote in this month. Thank you, everyone. Uh, write in next month. I don't care if it's the same one of you. We'll still read them. The same one of you. Yes. Yeah, the, every one of you. Gets. Write in again. Write in something funny. Something funny. Something. Yeah, send in your stories. If you have in... questions about us. Right. We'll answer them. Any questions. I don't care. I don't really have any secrets about my life. Yeah, we I really don't. don't censor myself. We really don't live in a censored secret life. If you no. noticed, actually, I think <laughs> we've revealed a lot of ourselves on accident. Right. 
which that's kind of what we do on the show. We're not we're real. we're not out to really discuss ourselves, really. I mean, that's not what we're doing. Nobody wants to sit. Do you know what podcasts I fucking hate? Is <laughs> this, the pe- one? <laughs> this one? This <laughs> one is the ones where people will sit there and they'll discuss all about themselves. They just talk about themselves for like an hour and a half. That's not interesting. I don't want to. And nobody really wants to know about you. But if you talk about something you love, talk about that, talk all about that, be passionate about it, you will come through that. People will get to know you through that. And right. that's what I like. That's the podcast I like. Right. Um, but yeah, thanks for writing in, everybody. Thanks for Thank listening, you. first of all. People listen to us. Can you imagine that? I don't know why. <laughs> not, I and mean, I love this medium because we're not, like, governed by anything. It feels free. That's what I keep telling you. You're the boss. I know, because when we first started, I was like, well, I don't know if I should say that. We may offend our <laughs> listener base. Yeah. And you were like, was... we don't have a listener base. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my thing was like, uh, uh, you were talking to your mom or whatever, and she's like, uh, you say fuck a little too many times. You say fuck only like half as much as I do. Do you know, I don't even feel like I say fuck that much on the show as I do in real life. That's what I'm saying is like, you don't say it very often. And I'm just right. like, I'm saying it, but I say it a lot in real life too. But my thing is, if you are offended by what I say. Then walk away from me. Yeah, I mean, like, it's okay. You, turn it off. You know, we're not... It's not like you paid to listen. Right. And you probably will never pay for these kind of episodes. I right. I mean, I don't know. In the future, we'll have a lot of extra content that we may start. Uh, Patreon or something for that. Maybe. But we we're need not some there more yet. listeners. But this, these kind of episodes will always be free, so we're not, you know... We're not obligated to please you very <laughs> <laughs> Right. That I sounds mean, awful. I mean, we want to. We want you to have fun. We, we, you know, we, we want you to like us. And I wrote it. But I'm not changing who I am. No, exactly. And I wrote an article about that on Creepy Lovely. You know, I mean, this podcast is for you. This is for the fans who still just love horror enough to put aside our differences and talk about movies we either love or hate. I mean, you hated the thing. The thing. The thing. You hated that movie. Right. Or maybe not hated, but you didn't like it. Right. I loved that movie. You didn't hear us sitting there fighting the entire time. You stupid motherfucker. Yeah, we weren't fighting over it. We weren't attacking each other over it. And honestly, that's the only thing the horror community could do better. Could stop attacking each other. Because Jesus Christ, we don't need that. But they're not as bad as like the beauty community. Don't know. <laughs> this the horror community is fucking perfect, but there are a little bit of some problems. Like I said, and that may just be a Twitter problem. That may not be. That's a, a troll thing. problem. Yeah, it's a troll problem. But maybe people are serious, and if you are, don't attack people, and definitely don't attack new people. Oh yeah, like there's people out there never seen our movies who call The Exorcist a low key hidden gem. And actually, I read something the other day, and I felt a little bad after I went off in my head about it. But the guy was talk, tell, or saying that um, Amer- American Psycho is like a hidden gem of a movie. I was like, dude, that movie's popular. <laughs> but it's popular within this community. Right. If and, I go out and I talk to some pe- and you know, people, they may not know what it is. Right. And, you know, I, I do have to stop myself sometimes and be like, you know what? Attacking somebody because they've never been exposed to this stuff is wrong. I mean, obviously, we're doing the podcast. Yeah, that's that, because that's of what me. This podca- <laughs> yeah, that's what the podcast is about. Right. It's about a love of horror. It's not, and because Jesus. I don't know anything, so yeah, it's about teaching people. That's what we do on here. We're we're kind of teaching you. We're going to learn you today, boy. I mean, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> that's horrifying. Um. <laughs> We're writing our own movie. <laughs> but anyway, you know, do better. Treat each other with respect. And Be nice don't people. Attack people. And Citizen Kane is not the best movie ever made. Nope. Uh, <laughs> so I'm 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 gonna put a plug in it and say that's casual horror for this month. Uh oh man, October's coming. And with that, our next movie 
is going to be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Woo! Toby Hooper's freaking masterpiece, which low budget as hell, but comes off, I don't know, it still freaks me out to this day. So that's going to start out Slash-O-Rama for October. That's what I'm calling Yay! it, Slash-O-Rama. Because it's going to be a month full of fla- f- <laughs> Full of... Full of flashers. flash rama that's right. Dicks. Dicks oh. as far as the eye can see. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dicks ain't that pretty. Yeah, no, they're not. Um, <laughs> I own one, so I know. <laughs> so slash rama and uh, we're starting it out. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited. We're starting it. And this is just the main episodes that I'm going to tell you right now. Not the treats we have in store for you for your Halloween season. Ooh, tasty treats. You got some Tootsie Rolls. Dude, you you sound like that weird guy in our neighborhood. My parents just told to stay away from that house. Uh, <laughs> you got some Tootsie Rolls. You got some Tootsie Rolls for me, big boy. Um, anyway. Big daddy. So, starting out Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Next, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street. After that is the John Carpenter masterpiece, Halloween. Which, uh, oh, a whole month of slashers. And obviously we have a casual horror episode. I won't tell you what that one's going to be about, but it won't be a loose fit episode like we do <laughs> usually. You said loose. <laughs> It'll have a theme. And uh, who knows? We might have a guest. I don't know. What? Maybe. <gasps> Maybe. I don't who? know. So. Who? I don't know yet. <laughs> the beautiful woman that you call your sister? Maybe. <gasps> um. Which she introduced to me to a lot of these movies, so I feel, like, obligated that she may need to get on the show. Um, I love her. So, yeah, and then the extra stuff is going to be so fun. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. And like I said, even if there's ten of you out there, you're in store for some cool-ass shit, because we're not going to stop the train. We're going to keep the content rolling like we do. And we're going to keep it as good and better going on. I mean, we're going to try to get all sorts of cool shit going. Uh... So, for Night of the Horrorphile, I'm Lee saying, stay spooky. I'm Brittany. Stay horrific. A good night. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining us for another great episode. Be sure to drop us a line on social media at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, pretty much everywhere we're found now. Um, You can find us on YouTube. And uh, to support the show, be sure to drop a review wherever you listen to fine podcasts, as well as on the web at our website, nightofthehorrorfile.com. And you can find Lee blogging it away over at creepylovely.com. And if you would, share us on all your social media platforms. Get the word out. Night of the Horrorfile could be your next favorite podcast. I'm Lee Evans saying, can't wait to see you here next week.